People always tell me, oh, you're an artist, you're an artist, you're an artist. And I will always stop them from saying that and just, I don't believe that my graffiti is an art form. My graffiti is vandalism. Me being my age, when you're out there, you still feel kind of young. It's crazy. You're out there running the streets. Copy, 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 copy. It's a little bit, you know, risky, whatever. It gives me a little bit of a thrill. It's cool to see your name here, there, there, and then people are calling you up. Yo, I seen you over here, I seen you over here. It's like an addiction, just to keep wanting to do it and do it and do it. It's like riding a motorcycle. You know, you're going 130 and the rest of the world is just gone. You know, you're doing a wall and you hear, freeze, motherfucker, I'll shoot you from here. And you look back and there's a cop with a gun. I've seen people get shot. I've seen people get stabbed. If you got a problem with me, I will fuck you up. How far are you willing to go? That's the changing point. Like, are you willing to take that risk? Go to jail for what you believe in, writing your name on shit. Yeah, if you can, please. Oh, okay. Yeah, just five okay. lines, five or seven lines. Yeah, like something like right here, be cool. The first time I went to county jail with graffiti, it was scary. You go to Dade County Jail and that shit's crazy. Dade County Jail is, is a fucked up ass jail, you know? And when you're there, at that time, as a young kid, 18 years old, for graffiti, it's kind of a scary thing. You're like, damn, you don't know what to expect. And the people in jail, you know, they're there for drugs or for breaking in the houses or for whatever it might be. And they're like, yo, Jit, what you here for? And I'm like, here for fucking doing graffiti. But they, they're like, why? Why? Why would you waste your time? You're not getting no money from that shit. You're not, the fuck you going around writing on people's shit and not getting nothing out of it. Like, what the, you know, it's a concept the average person can't understand. Like, why would you do something and risk getting in trouble and getting no money out of it? MSG has been around since the very early 90s. Chrome started it, and uh, even though they're just a little older than me, they were just so far beyond. There were other crews out there, but nobody was doing what they were doing. Is that my piece? This is a legal gun, by the way. Yeah, I just did that with my hood up, man. <laughs> we got members spread out everywhere, all over the globe. I'm Touch, born and raised in Miami. I got some money. We got some cocaine. I like making money. Fast money is almost like fucking to me. I write abuse, MSG crew. I don't really care to talk about my personal life at all, what I do for a living. I tattoo in trap houses where he was selling drugs. You got pit bulls, you got little kids running around pampers and shit. Chrome, first and foremost, was a god. But if you ask anybody in the graffiti world who he's done is, they'll be able to tell you who I am. And what I do is street graffiti. I just enjoy bombing. Bombing is just getting up as much as possible everywhere, all city, county walls, all that shit. It's, it's all fair game and we want it all. And it's not because I have anything against the government. It has nothing to do with fucking trying to be an anarchist or yada, yada, yada. I just like writing on other people's shit. Track sides where you'll see it if you're riding the train, you know, you might see a rooftop. Not people's personal property, nothing like that. I like to do shit that doesn't offend too many people. People always ask me, what, what is graffiti to you? Like, graffiti to me is, it's, it's like a sickness. You know, I can't drive down the street without wanting to hit every curb, pole, sign, wall. It's just programmed in my head that I gotta get that shit. I have done some really fucked up shit and painted some storefronts and stuff, you know, sometimes I get a little loose, but uh, <laughs> I try not to do that too much, you know. I do believe in karma. I know what goes around comes around. The city leaves these holes in the sound walls. The reason they do that is for emergencies, for like fires, things like that. I was one of the first ones to find these holes and exploit them right in the middle of the highway where people wonder, you know, how the hell did that get there? 
other graffiti artists have followed me, and uh, they started to seal them up. It's become such a problem. My claim to fame is highway signs, because I've hit more than anyone, at least in this city, I can say. For me, I like it because it's prime time. You know, people can choose to ignore graffiti on the side. You know, they'll drive by and not look at it, you know? But this one, it kind of just smacks you right in the face. Most of us at some point have seen graffiti on the side of a building like this. But to scale these metal poles while balancing on a beam, holding a can of spray paint while hundreds of cars whiz by, that's a bit more shocking. And the first time I did that, it was like a dream. Like, it wasn't even real. Like, I was doing it, but I couldn't believe I was doing it. The majority of my bombing has been alone. And the reason for that is anytime, anything can happen. A lot of times where I just got lucky, like, you know, a cop pulling over and saying, freeze, motherfucker, I'll shoot you from here. And you look back, and there's a cop with a gun. You know, get down, you know, you're under arrest. You jump down the highway, and you can hear him so close, you hear him breathing behind you, like, <sighs> and his key's moving. So you know he's right there behind you. From there you go, you hide under a car. You know, for hours you can see units going by. So I've come that close several times. Well, we're very disappointed and frankly disgusted to see this type of activity along the expressways. You know, especially on this road, this is one of the first impressions tourists get. Graffiti has become a deep-rooted social problem that has bubbled up from the underground to consume public buildings. And to me, street art is like, what, the 70s was a political statement. And we all had the same idea, just fucking bombing shit up. It's just a general and pervasive lack of consideration for other people. I think it's the bottom line. I think to graffiti is... What? To, you, what? to us, it's art, you know? It's not a crime, but you know, if the government give us some right to do, we can make it look nice, you know what I'm saying? You don't live in this building. You come into your house, you're drawn into this guy's house. I'm talking is about... Is that art? I'm gonna write on your house, your car, you know what I mean? I don't do stupid shit like that. But you put this big fucking highway, and I decided to decorate the fucking I feel like it. That's my choice. When it comes to commercial real estate and shit, or you're a billboard, and you want to advertise some big profit company because you have more money, you can put your big billboard and, and make the city look ugly with your big fucking whatever, then I can fucking tag that shit, and that's my opinion. Two of the most notorious and prolific graffiti pros were Crook and Chrome, tagging walls, fences, and poles all over Miami-Dade County. They were caught and arrested several years ago, but cleanup efforts continued well after. You know, you ain't really trying to hurt nobody. You're just trying to do something that someone can see and think about it and look at it and just, you know, it goes through their mind. No one's ever like, oh, you're that horrible guy that fucking did this. And, oh, man, you're that guy I've always seen since I was a young kid. I've had kids going to me like, man, I used to can't wait till I was on the highway, man, with my mom. It'd be nothing more fun to see that, you know? When I was young, rolling around with mom and dad, I would see people like Chrome. So these are all like uh, mini highway signs. My main partner for a long time was Heat. I put here Crook and Chrome because they were my major influences. Like back in the days, you talk about what drew everybody to Chrome. Chrome was doing legals, illegals. He was just a, a man on a mission. And he had a good group of people around him. All these kids with extraordinary skills that you see their work off the highway and you just wonder how they did that, when did they do that? You know, it wasn't there yesterday, but you know, just like a ghost, bam, it's there. And once I started doing it myself, you know, like, like they all say, it's addictive. The more you see yourself up, the more you just want to keep going and keep going. Territory, spraying signs, graffiti art, call it what you want. Vandals are hitting South Florida signs again. This is by no means the first time this has happened. There were two sure. taggers, Crook and Chrome, used to see their signs sure, all over. They caught them and they were. Chrome is just one of those people where people are drawn to him, you know? He makes everybody better. being my age, when you're out there, you still feel kind of young. It's crazy. You're out there running the streets. Because it looks like it kind of worked for the city, sort of. That's how I sneak into like concerts and shit. And I'll just like walk up and I'll start lifting up the drains and just looking at them and be like, oh, okay, and putting them down and then walking over and getting closer to the entrance and be like, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, get out of my way. 
and they just let me walk right in. <laughs> you can get away with just about anything if you play your cards right. I do paint a lot by myself, though. You don't have to watch out for anybody else. So if you get busted, you get busted, and that's it. Try to park a little bit less conspicuous. You know, if anything happens with somebody else, I'm like, yo, get the fuck out of here, and I'll take it. Some people get arrested one time, spend a day in Dade County Jail, and they're like, well, fuck that shit. That shit was hell on earth. I'm never going to do illegal graffiti. I climbed up onto a roof, and the cops were there looking for us for so long. You could see them with their flashlight, like, looking, and they would come right here in front of me or right here on this side. Like, even lifting my head would have got me busted. There's lots of great graffiti artists out there that have never fucking had the balls to ever fucking do anything illegal or go out there and just never pay their dues in the streets. They're just too scared. It's like, you know, I love this shit. I believe that I was lucky. I came into the graffiti world right before the internet was big. So I still kind of had to like figure out how to make my own markers, how to like take a stock tip and like melt the tip on it and cut it to try to make it spray fatter. These days you could just go to almost any art store and find graffiti spray paint there. And the thing also with the internet is you could paint something in the middle of nowhere and then put it on Instagram. And then people have no clue that that could be just your backyard. You painted it once, you did it again, you painted it again. You know, people don't know that you're out there doing spots and spots and spots. You know, before you'd have to go out and look and see what people are doing. Now you can just follow someone you like. I'm not big on social media. The bottom line is, Real recognize real. So at the end of the day, you're gonna know the people who are really out painting and following. You're gonna see them. And these people that are just, you know, on the internet, photoshopping or whatever bullshit it may be, they'll get called out and it is what it is. But that's definitely true. There are a lot of uh, younger cats that uh, they don't do it like, like, like we did it back in the day. They got it easier. This neighborhood, Miami, but it's also a neighborhood called Wynwood, which is obviously worldwide known now. It's like a, a mecca of graffiti now. I can literally go paint any wall I want right now. The cops wouldn't even say, say a word with a spray can. But before, you paint someone with a spray can, and man, the cops are pulling up on you, what's going on? But now you can just paint anywhere you fucking feel like it, and it's all for all, you know? It's, it's, it doesn't even make no difference. Miami here for the longest time was, uh, it was like such a bad thing, you know? If you were doing graffiti, you had gang unit out tracking you down, taking pictures, creating files, basically trying to get you. At a certain point, uh, they started Wynwood. That's just like a free for all. I mean, people go down there and paint all the time. It's just become so acceptable. They have like little golf cart tours. You can go see the graffiti. Tourists come down here just to see the graffiti. Some of it's so good. Now, if you come with graffiti artists and you do good, like you see opportunity to travel and get sponsored by spray paint companies, then people fly you out and pay for you. It's definitely going more commercial. That's not where it started. It started as uh, just a bunch of people trying to be infamous and create some dope shit. So it's become a lot more acceptable. Now what you see, all this condominiums and all this stuff here, 10 years ago, within the last 10 years, oh, man, it's been insane. We're talking about a house right here that I stay at now. It looks like an abandoned house full of graffiti, right? But it's worth $400,000. Why is that? Because everyone's buying up all the property on the outskirts of, 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 of Wynwood, because this could be a condominium soon, you know? Everyone's waiting for that boom to start pushing outward, outward, like in most cities, you know? From a neighborhood known for crime and drugs, crack, heroin, and now you're seeing Gucci advertisements that look like they're street art and they're being protected by security guards because now graffiti artists say, oh shit, that's a perfect opportunity to fuck it up, you know? Especially corporate America used to look down upon us, now they're using the same thing against, you know, to, to sell their products. You think it's like a death of an era? 
Uh, no, I don't think it's death in there. I think people are still gonna do it. It's just, uh, who knows where it's gonna go. A motherfucker comes in here with an AK-47, showing it off. And he stands, he goes to say what's up to his, his homie. And the fucking thing goes off right here, dude. Look at this shit. Big fucking hole in the floor. Decline. No, come on. You fucking kidding me? Yeah, I got you. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's right. I don't have any money on that fucking card. Hold on. What in the hell are you trying to do beside nothing? I thought so. I rest my case. <laughs> in Miami, under all of these bridges, a lot of them don't have fences, so you can just walk right up onto the highway and hit the sound wall. There's like kind of no way for them to get you because you could just jump right down and you're gone, you know? It's like a fucking, like, fuck you in your face. Right now, I do what I can. You know, every artist eventually slows down a little bit for one reason or another. My condition is I have uh, stage four cancer, and uh, that took a lot out of me. You know, before that, I was invincible. I can go out and do something right now that's gonna be super likable, and I can make money off of it and promote it. And I tell people that all the time. I could do that, but like, am I gonna be happier than the day? Am I gonna be true to myself? No. And to me, if you don't experience that like illegal middle of the night when no one else is fucking out there, that rush you get, that's part of like being who you are. And when you're just like this guy who, oh, can I paint your wall? There's no excitement in that. Like, you know, you should try to do all aspects. For me, I'll just always do it, I know that. I love it enough that I'll always risk it. I think graffiti is only getting bigger. But it's tough to see where it's going. You're always gonna have your leading vomiters. It's always five or six in a state that just kill it. It's like, who the fuck is that? <laughs> Are uh, you guys still down for another one or what? <laughs>